Good morning. Welcome to Christmas Sunday, Church of the Open Door. And uh, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, did you get a chance last week, or actually yesterday, to be a part of Christmas Serve? Anybody get a chance to be a part of that? Uh, our family did. And as we were driving through Lorraine, uh, we went to two different places. One of them was a place where we served uh, some food to some people. Another place was where we went and delivered some food and some toys. And uh, we're just driving around Lorraine. It's a big city and needs to be reached, right? So we're, we're going there. Um, so I'm driving around and I'm starting to notice Christmas decorations. Now, it's, when you walk, when you drive around at night, you know, all the li- you see all the lights. But when you drive around the day, the lights don't, you know, show up. So all you see is like um, the things that people have in their yards or things that are big that are on their house. And I would, you know, drive by some houses and there'd be nothing there. Then other houses, there'd be like a reindeer or a Santa or, you know, a sleigh or a nativity scene. Then I'd come by a house that was just like everything was there. It it looks like they had, you know, kind of emptied out Walmart the last three years and just dumped everything in their yard. And I'm I'm so sorry if I'm describing your house. (laughs) But it was just, I mean, this is my word for it. It's I called it Christmas clutter. It just, just the, the yards were cluttered. Then I'd drive by another house and be like, okay. Whew. Well, then I, I found this picture. I, I got to show you. This is the, this is the best or the worst uh, example I, I've ever seen. Look at all of the clutter that's in this yard. I mean, they've got everything. They've got Santa. They've got the Grinch. They've got Jesus. They've got, um, you know, big blue ball. Does everybody have a big blue ball? I don't know what that means at Christmas time. But here's, here's the guy. He doesn't have enough, so he's putting the Frosty up next. And I, I just look at that, and I'm like, I'm, I'm, again, I'm so sorry this is your house, but that doesn't work for me. That's just Christmas clutter. And, you know, like we've been saying throughout the whole series, we want to clear away the clutter to get back to the simple message of Christmas. That's been our theme for the month of December. If you're here for the first time, we've been, you know, talking about clutter in Christmas clutter, to me, the worst kind of Christmas clutter of all is clutter in what we believe. Does that make sense? Clutter in what we believe. And here's what I say that. Because at Christmas time, believe is one of the best words. You see it everywhere, right? Don't like all the Christmas movies, don't they have, if you'll just believe? I mean, Will Ferrell wants us to believe, if, and wants us to hear, if you'll just believe, then what? Santa will come, you know, and um, Tom Hanks was, you know, wants us to go on a journey of belief. The movie poster even says, this holiday season, believe. Oh, that's such a good word, but it's not just recent Christmas movies. You know, the, the Miracle on the 34th Street, I don't know how old that Christmas movie is, but they, they want us to believe in the miracle, and, and it's, this, it's this magical time of Christmas, and, you know, <laughs> I saw this, believe in the magic, that's what we're supposed to believe, believe in the magic of Christmas. And that sounds so wonderful. So I found this one phrase that I just got to show it to you because it's just so good. Christmas, it waves a magic wand over the world. I should have brought one of those. And behold, everything is softer and more beautiful. I tried to put in the most sappiest voice I could. Did you get it? I mean, I just want to kick that. That's not Christmas. You know, that's, bah! That's the, Christmas is not about magic. Don't, if we don't believe in the magic of Christmas, then, then what it is that we're supposed to believe in? Because, you know, there's all these believe things. Well, you know, we're to believe in Santa Claus. Have you, you know, there's all kinds of posters and badges. And if you've got one today, please take that off. Um, you know, 
you can believe in Santa Claus, but that's not what Christmas is about. So what, let's just say you said, I believe in Christmas. That's a, that feels like that's okay. But what do you mean when you say, I believe in Christmas? There are so many different belief systems. I think that Christmas is the time of the year when everybody's belief system comes out and we're just like, it's okay. You know, you can believe whatever you want. Have you, have you, you guys all know where Wheaton College is? Have you heard of that? It's a school that Billy Graham started. Uh, it's a great Christian college. It's like this, you know, bastion of evangelicalism. And right now, there's uh, this uproar because one of the professors at, you know, professor at the college said, hey, Christians and Muslims, we believe the same God. We worship the same God. And the administration was like, whoa, 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 time, time out, time out, no, whoa. We don't believe in the same God. What are you talking about? And the, the professor was like, oh, no, we do. Allah, Yahweh, same God. No. And so there's this there's this big split right now with this awesome Christian college where some professors are with this professor going, oh, no, no, we want to be inclusive. You know, we, you know, we all believe in the same thing. You know, let's have dialogue. And hey, I love dialogue. I'm all for talking about what do we have in common, but let's not water down the gospel and water down what we believe into this nonsense that Christians and Muslims believe the same thing and worship the same God. No, we've got to have definition about what we believe. And I think at Christmas time, it's one of the times that we are most prone to just kind of believe in the magic of Christmas and believe in Christmas and, and what are we talking about? So. Today, on Christmas Sunday, since I'm getting all hot and bothered, let's talk about what is it that we believe at Christmas? What, what, what's the message of Christmas that we want people to believe in? Because you can believe the story of Jesus and being born in Bethlehem. You can believe, you know, he was laid in a manger you can believe there were shepherds, or you can believe in the story of Jesus in the manger and still miss the message of Christmas. I see confusion on some of your faces. You're like, wait, wait, wait a minute. I, I thought, sorry, but I thought Jesus being born in the manger was the message of Christmas. I know, it's not. It's a, it's a part of the story, because that stuff's in the Bible. Yes, Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and Joseph and Mary there, you know. Um, Frosty was not there, just newsflash. I know some of you are so confused. Frosty was not there, Rudolph wasn't there, shepherds were probably there, but I'm not sure that the wise men, I don't think the wise men were there. So, you know, what parts am I supposed to believe? I'm just not sure, what do I believe? And I want you to leave today clear about the message of Christmas, what it is you're supposed to believe. And uh, I've been saying for the month of December that if, if I had to choose one verse out of the whole Bible, and this is a thick one, one verse to capture the message of Christmas, I would choose the Gospel of John, chapter three, verse what? John three sixteen. Everybody knows this verse. Look at this. We've been looking, you know, one word at a time, you know, one phrase at a time. Today we come to whoever believes. Whoever believes in him. How appropriate. Great timing. What does John 3.16 teach us about what we are to believe? What does the Christmas story call us? If we want to be down to the simple message of Christmas, what, is, what does it call us to believe? Well, John says, whoever believes in him. Okay, help me out now. Who's him? Jesus. I'm so glad you got that right. <laughs> We're to believe in Jesus. But what? What are we supposed to believe about Jesus? There's a lot of people who believe in Jesus in their own way, that he existed, that he was a historical figure. What, what, do we, what does John mean when he says, belie whoever believes in him? Those three words are very significant. And to believe in someone is to believe in who they are. So if you're taking notes, the first thing to write down is, when John says believe in him, he wants us to believe in who Jesus is. 
Well, how do we know who Jesus is? Well, back to the Christmas story, the angels. You all know Luke, Luke chapter 2, verse 10? Turn with me if you don't. Luke chapter 2, verse 10. The angels do a great job that wonderful night in telling us who Jesus is. Is and so this is what we're to believe. Luke chapter 2, verse 10. I'll put this on the screen for you. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, I bring you good news of great joy. It will be for all the people. Remember the phrase, all the people. Come back to that. For all the people, today in the town of David, a Savior has born to you. He is. Now, the question is, who is Jesus? What are we supposed to believe about Jesus? Don't the angels do a great job of answering? He is who? What? Tell me. Christ. There you go. Write that down. Who is Jesus? He is Christ the Lord. And isn't that the exact same thing that John, the same guy that wrote John 3, 16, writes at the end of his gospel when he says, hey, all this stuff I've written, you know, chapter 1 through 20 and what I'm about to say in chapter 21, all this stuff, I've written it so that you may believe what? Believe that Jesus is the Christ. Now, I could stop right there. That's a great place to stop. Wouldn't it be great to be out of the Christmas sermon like 11 o'clock? Don't leave. Don't say yes either, please. I have a few more things to say, but that's so good. What do I believe? I believe that he is the Christ. So write that down. Let's talk about that. What does that mean? Many of you know that the word Christ and the word Messiah, in fact, some of you have in your translations, he is the Messiah. Don't be concerned. It's the same thing. Christ, Messiah, exact same word. Well, you say they don't look like the same word. Well, Messiah is the English transliteration of the Hebrew word, Mashiach. Mashiach. So you can hear Messiah in there. We just, in English, just completely transliterated that Hebrew word. So we get Messiah. Christ is the English transliteration of the Greek word for Messiah, which is Christos. It's just different languages, but the exact same word. So every time you see the word Messiah, this is the word Christ, same word. Don't be confused about translations. It's telling us Jesus is the promised one, the anointed one. That's what Messiah, that's what Christ means. Christos, the anointed one, Messiah, the, the anointed one. He's the one that the Old Testament prophets promised, that the, the rabbis would promise and tell stories about when, when he comes. And, it's, and we today don't have that same sense of longing and expectation that the Jews had because every Jewish boy, every Jewish girl heard stories from rabbis and heard scriptures read about the coming Messiah. Today, since most Jews don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah, they're still waiting for the Messiah. You know, a couple years ago, I heard he showed up in New York, the, the latest Messiah. So, so this whole idea of a Messiah is not a, a, a new thought. And every time somebody claims the Messiah or somebody points to him and goes, that's, that's the one, eventually that guy dies. And then a couple of months, years later go by, and it's like, oh, I guess he, he wasn't really the Messiah. Because nobody expects messiahs to die and so nobody can understand well, how can jesus be the messiah he died well there's more to the story right so john we'll get to that john wants us to understand the angels while jesus is still a baby they want us to understand this baby this this one that people will celebrate their birth his birth for years to come is the christ he, he's the messiah and so John, it could stop right there, but he doesn't. Did you notice the next phrase? Jesus is the Christ. Now I put in red what I want you to see. The Son of God. That's the, that's the next thing you're supposed to believe about who Jesus is. And this is where it gets troubling. I don't know if you realize this, but all the expectations for Messiah, every time you read about Messiah or, or Christ in the Old Testament, Every time the rabbis taught, there was never the idea that the Messiah would be divine. He was just human. Some people didn't know that. Now, great human, he's the anointed one, but he's just human. Nobody expected a divine Messiah. Why? Because as we said a couple weeks ago, God can't come down to earth. That's, he's the unapproachable God. He's the, he's the God who's so holy and transcendent and removed. It, 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 it's, you, you can't, he can't come here. He would burn us up. The, the concept of divinity, 
being on earth is crazy talk. That's Christmas. Starting to get it. That's Christmas. And this is why John's words are so wild. He's the Messiah, okay, Jesus of Nazareth, I, I, I'll listen, maybe he is the Messiah, but the Son of God, you lost me. You lost me, he can't be Messiah and God, that, that just doesn't fit. But write down, what do we believe about Jesus? He's the Messiah, he's the Christ. He is the Son of God. John has already told us that in his gospel. We've been preaching through the gospel of John. The very first verses, we found out that in the beginning was the Word, that was Jesus, and he was, in the beginning he was with God, and then John goes, and he was God. From the beginning, from the eternity past, Jesus has existed as God. When the Bible says that Jesus is the Son of God, it's not referring to the fact that he was born. Don't think you know, in human terms, when you hear the phrase, Son of God. Don't think in human terms. Don't think of a boy. Don't think of a baby. Don't think of, you know, jo Pastor John talked about this last week. He's not the same guy that wrote the Gospel of John, just so you're not getting confused. You know, he helped us understand that when we say the word Son of God, you know, and we talk about the Father, we're not talking about, a, you know, a, a male person. God is spirit. He doesn't have a body. He has never had a body. He has existed in eternity past as spirit. So the same with Jesus. Jesus never had a body until he came to earth. I don't know if you realize this. He existed forever as the, as the Son of God. In a, that was his role in the Trinity. So don't think father, male, husband who has children. Don't think of son as baby who grows up to be a boy, who grows up to be a man. No, when we're talking about the Son of God, we're talking about the role that Jesus has in eternity as a trinity. But here's the scandal. That son of God became uh, Christ the Lord. And so the, the angels tell us that he is Christ the Lord. He's the, the human Messiah who is God. So write down this. Jesus is the Christ, the son of God, who was born the son of man. Let me explain that. While I don't want you to think about a baby or a boy when you talk about son of God, do think about a baby who becomes a boy when you talk about Jesus as a son of man. Not trying to confuse you. I'm just trying to explain to you that in Jesus you have one who is fully God and has always been God. He was never born. The Bible never equates the son of God with someone being born. Jesus was not born the Son of God. Jehovah's Witnesses teach that. That's heresy. They teach that in the ages past, God the Father begat Jesus the Son in eternity somewhere. No, no, no. That's, that's, that's why John 3.16 in the King James can be so dangerous because it can be so misleading when it says that God so loved the world that he, be, he gave his only begotten Son, his only born Son. No, Jesus was not born somewhere in eternity. He wasn't born the Son of God. He's always been the Son of God. Is this clear? But then he became the Son of Man when he was born to Joseph and Mary. That's when he became the baby. Don't think of Jesus as a baby in heaven. He's never been a baby in heaven. Don't think of Jesus as a man in eternity that way as a, as, 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 as a man. But now that he's become human, he's become a, a baby who grew up to be a boy, who grew up to be a man, now you can think about Jesus as a man. That's the radical, crazy talk of the incarnation that God became man. That's what you believe. And if you don't believe that, then you don't get Christmas. Christmas is not about magic and about Santa and about believing whatever feels good. It's about understanding that this baby that was born is the Messiah of God. He is the son of the living God. He's always been God. And he was born, not on December 25th, don't got to believe that. He was born in Bethlehem to the Virgin Mary and became, now he became a human son, a son of man. Jesus is son of God, son of man. Those have to go together. Or you don't have the Bible Jesus. You've got some invention of Jesus. All right, make sense? So the angels told us this that night. You know, a, a Savior is born to you. He is Christ human messiah the lord god they they always go together 
this is the, the message of Christmas. This is what we believe about who Jesus is. And yeah, thank you. So, so you've got Son of God, Son of Man, and people walking around Jesus, Jesus' day were confused about that. And so, you know, did Jesus say he was the Son of God? Yeah. Did Jesus say he was Messiah? Yeah. Did Jesus say he was the Son of Man? Yeah. It's, John says it over and over again. Remember I said John 1, he says in the beginning was God and the, and the Word was with God and the Word was God. Then John, a couple of verses like verse 14, then John says, and the Word, that's Jesus, the eternal second person of the Trinity, the Son of God, became flesh. That's Christmas. He became human. Then down in verse 18, it says that we've seen the glory of the one and only who himself is God. Jesus himself, who is God. And then Jesus, uh, throughout the, the Gospel of John, uses this I am language, which is about him being God. And, and then, you know, he tells uh, Thomas to believe after the resurrection. And Thomas worships him and says, my Lord and my God. And Jesus doesn't go, whoa, 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 whoa wait a minute. He stands there and receives the worship because he is God. You know, do uh, you know the story in John chapter 9 where, this, where Jesus healed this blind man? And uh, after he, uh, uh, after a couple minutes, it says, in, and later on in chapter 9, that, that Jesus came to him and said, do you believe in the Son of Man? And the, the guy who had just been healed, here, here it is. Do you believe in the Son of Man? The guy who had just been healed goes, well, who, who is he? You know, po point him out to me so I can believe, so I can know who he is. And Jesus says, hello. <laughs> I just opened your eyes. Now use them. You're looking at him. Such a great story. I think this guy was blind a couple minutes ago. Now I can see Jesus goes, well, use those eyes I just gave you. Uh, you're looking at him. I am the one who is speaking to you. I, I, that's me. And the guy goes, I, I, I believe. You're the son of man. I believe these words go together. Son of man, son of God, Messiah. So Jesus is making all these declarations, and I've already slipped in to the second thing you're supposed to believe about Jesus. Not just believe who he is, believe what he said. When you believe in him, we're back to John 3, 16, when you believe in him, believe in Jesus, you believe who he is, and you believe what he said. Wow, what am I supposed to believe about what he said? Everything. Everything every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Jesus is the word of God. Woo! But if there's one verse that I would point to as, I think, the best thing you to believe that Jesus said, and I could get in trouble here because some of you are like, well, what about this verse? But here, here it is, my favorite, John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way. Now, you guys know, if you've been around me, you know I could preach a whole sermon on these two words right here, right? And I already said that I am is a reference to him being God, the God of the Old Testament, the only God there is, the God. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I am life itself. But I won't preach that. I'll just, just to help you see that Jesus doesn't say I am a way. He says I am the way. There is an exclusivity about the, the, uh, Jesus Christ and about his claims. And if you're going to believe what Jesus said, you can't pick and choose. It's not a smorgasbord here. Maybe you're going to do that later on for today, for Christmas Sunday. But there should never be a smorgasbord of belief. I love that. That sounds so fun to say. A smorgasbord of belief. It's just fun to say. No, you, there's an exclusivity about who Jesus is and about what the gospel is. There's not many ways. You know, you can't uh, get on a, a plane that's going to Seattle and say, uh, I want this plane to go to um, Boston. And they're like, no. Or Miami, you know, this plane's going to Seattle. Well, I, you know, don't all planes lead to, uh, to Miami? No, this plane goes to Seattle. That plane goes to Miami. And yet people think they can, you know, believe anything. Don't all paths, paths, don't all paths lead to God? No, no, they don't. I am the way. Why did Jesus say that? Well, because he had just said to his disciples, I'm, I'm going away. And um, you can't follow me. And they're like, what, what, what? I'm going to the Father. Well, we, we want to go to the Father. We, we want to go to heaven. We want to be with God. Can't we, can't we go with you? He, he goes, no, not, not, not now, but you will later. Well, how will we know the way, they say. And that's when Jesus says, I am the way. Listen to me, Peter, John, Thomas, Philip. 
Listen to me. I am the way to the Father. You can't be in relationship with the Father except through me. I am the truth, the truth. I am the life. What a, what a statement. I am life itself. Life doesn't just come from me. I am life, and I give life to whoever I choose. Those are power-packed words. Here's what I want you to believe about Christmas. Believe in who Jesus is and believe in what Jesus has said. But there's a third thing. You're taking notes, right? He's got, there's another blank there. What's the three? Believe in what Jesus did. There has never been a life in the history of the world that has been lived more on purpose, more intentional than Jesus Christ. This nonsense I hear every once in a while, Jesus was just kind of a wandering rabbi who just kind of wandered around and said, oh look, birds. The kingdom of God is like birds, you know. Now Jesus, everywhere he went there was intentionality. He was a focused, purposed man he came with a mission. Do you know what the mission of was for Jesus? He came, and this is why he was born, he came to die. Now, you've all been born. Hopefully none of you have been hatched. You've all been born, but you weren't born to die. You will die. Hopefully not while I'm preaching, but you will die. But you weren't born to die. You were born for a different purpose. Your purpose was not to die. Jesus' was. Ever think about that? His purpose was to die. And if he didn't die on the cross, he missed his purpose, which is why at one time when he said to his disciples, you know, son of man must go, you know, and be uh, uh, tempted or must be um, uh, beaten by the, 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 the elders and the priests and betrayed and suffer and die. And Peter grabs him and says, no, 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 that's not going to happen. And what did Jesus say to him? Get behind me, Satan. You're trying to get me off course. I've only come for one reason. It's to die as the, as the, as the Savior of the whole world. Jesus died on the cross for your sins and mine. If you don't have a cross, Christmas is meaningless. Where, where did we come up with the idea of Christmas anyway? It's not in the Bible. <gasps> did he just say, yeah, search your Bible for Christmas. You won't find it. But what you will find is that the early church in Matthew and Luke, the two longest gospels, said, oh, there's something very exciting and special about the birth. So they spent a long time writing about the birth, and the early church recognized that and went, wow, there's all this attention given to the birth. Maybe we should have a festival. So they created a festival to honor how much space was given in the Matthew and Luke and even John to the birth of Jesus. John does it in a more cosmic kind of way, but there's all this attention given to the birth of Jesus, so maybe we should celebrate it. And that's where Christmas came from. While it's not, the word's not in the Bible, it is very much a biblical concept because the gospel spends so much time talking about the birth. They want us to get the details right. His birth matters, but you can get all the birth details right and if you divorce that from his death on the cross, then you don't have a Christmas worth celebrating. If you don't keep the incarnation, God becoming flesh, if you don't keep that Christmas story with the crucifixion, you have nothing worth celebrating. Sing about magic because that's all you've got left. You don't have anything else. The incarnation must always be connected to the crucifixion. Jesus was born to die for your sins and mine. Hallelujah, the greatest gift ever, right? But you notice I have another phrase here. And was resurrected. We gotta keep together the birth of Jesus, the incarnation, with the crucifixion of Jesus, with the resurrection of Jesus. Because if he was just born a special man and then died a special death, supposedly for the sins of the world, he's still in the tomb. How does his death make you know, any different than anybody else's death? Well, because this one and only you know, son of God, son of man, who is the special birth, who died on the cross 
was resurrected three days later. God's stamp of approval saying everything he says he, he is is true. Everything he said he, he, that he would do, he did. You can believe who Jesus is. You can believe what he said. And you can believe what he did because I raised him back from the dead. That's God's way of saying believe. Amen. And I'm, now I'm into Easter because you ought to got to keep Easter and Christmas together. They belong together. So incarnation, crucifixion, resurrection, that's what we believe. And really, you can believe just about anything else you want if you get those three right, man. Who Jesus is, what he said, what he did, that he died on the cross for your sins and was resurrected, then you're in good shape. I don't really have a quibble with you about anything else. This is, that's how important these three core things are. And that's why I wanted to preach a simple message on Christmas about who Jesus is, about what he said, and about what he did. Now, I have a friend of mine who attended a church in Washington, D.C., who said, this pastor, about the time he got to the end of his sermon, uh, he, he stopped and started to say something, and the whole church joined in. It was two words. Here's the words. So what? He's, this pastor has trained his church that near the end of his sermon, after he's done talking about all the truths and all the theology, he wants, he wants them to all think, so what? So they all say it out loud. So let me do a so what today. So what you believe who Jesus is? So what you believe he's the Son of God, the Son of Man, the Messiah? You know, these, who, so what that you believe he died on the cross? What, what, now what? Well, if you believe what we've just talked about, if this Christmas you believe, then trust Jesus as your Savior. If you believe he died on the cross for your sins, then don't stop there. See, the Bible, and especially John, the guy that wrote the Gospel of John, he wants us to understand that believing can never be this um, kind of um, mental assent. This, you know, I, I agree with that. I agree with what you said. Yeah, I believe that. No, if it's real belief, if it's real faith, then it always, it always yields to an action. What you believe shows up in what you do. Now, this is true whether you believe the Christmas story or not. This is true no matter what you believe. What you do always demonstrates what you believe. Or I can reverse it. What you believe always shows up in what you do. So if you say this Christmas, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins, then, then trust him as your Savior. Have you ever done that? Have you ever trusted Christ as your Savior? Maybe you can tell the, the Christmas story inside out, but maybe you can you know, say, I believe on that, but have you taken the step of saying, I surrender my life? Because see, trust and belief, it's the same thing. That those words are just, especially in the, in the original language, they're just the same thing. If you say you believe, then you trust. I mean, you, you already do this. When you sat down, you believed that the seed would hold you, that you, you trusted. So you sat down. When you, when you go out today or when you got, came here this morning, you put your key in the car and you turned the ignition. You believed. I doubt if any of you said, I believe. Maybe if you have a junker. I believe this car will start. Come on, baby. But most of you didn't. You, you put the key in, you turn it, because you, you acted on your belief. You trusted the ignition, the key, the, all the stuff in there. When you turned your steering wheel, you trusted and you believed that it was going to turn the car, especially as something's coming towards you. You believe and you, it, it affects your actions all the time. I'm just asking you today, if you say on Christmas you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, and was resurrected on the third day, then what have you done about it? And I want to call you on Christmas Sunday 2015 to trust Christ, to trust Jesus as your Savior. The best Christmas ever. 
Now, we, we, we've, we've talked about three things, right? We've said that, that we want to believe who Jesus is, we want to believe what he said, we want to believe what he did. So we've just talked about the so what of what he did. Since he died on the cross, then we trust him for our, to be our savior. What about this one, believe what Jesus said? Well, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if he's the way, what should you do? Yeah, follow him, yes. If he's the way, follow him as your leader. Now, there's a lot of people who say, I believe, at Christmas and at other times, but the leader they're following is not Jesus. Well, who's their leader? It's real easy. Find a mirror in your house. That's who most of us are following. I do what I want to do. And if I'm a Christian, I sure hope God blesses my plan. I've got a plan for my life. I sure hope God you know, blesses it because that's what I want to do. Have you ever stopped to ask, what does Jesus want to do with all of your intellect, all of your gifts, all of your abilities, all the things that God's been working in your life? What does he want you to do with that? Ask him. He's the leader. What a novel thought. This is what it means to believe in what he said. If he's the way, if he's the truth, if he's life, follow him, which is what Jesus asked his early disciples to do, remember? He said, hey, follow me. So they left their plans and dreams and followed Jesus. Let me challenge you this Christmas. You know, our society just bombards us to be whatever you want to be. You can, you know, be whatever you dream. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Make sure that those dreams have come from God. Don't ask God to sanctify your dreams. If you are a Christian, then he decides what he's going to do with your life. Let his dreams become your dreams. By the way, they're much better, much bigger. Will bring you much more joy. Don't spend your one and only life pursuing what you think is God's will for you but you've never asked him, and you get to it, and you're like, this is all there is? Because that's exactly what you'll say if you've pursued your dream, but if, if he's your leader and you're following him, then he will lead you into a perfect path, along a perfect path, because you're following him. If you believe this Christmas, then follow Jesus as your leader. The, the, then the last thing, we said that the first thing was that we want to believe who he is. So what's the so what of believing that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, the born of Son of Man? What's the so what of that? To worship him as Lord. This is what the, the wise men believed when they found Jesus 18 months, two years old, who knows? They believed something about him, and so they acted on that. This is, this is what Thomas did when he, when he believed that Jesus was God. He worshiped him. He bowed down before him because he's the Lord of all. See, what you believe shows up in what you do. So there's something for all of you to do today. Don't put your notes away yet. I know you are. You've closed your Bible, you're done. I'm not done. And hopefully you're not either. Which one of these things are you gonna do today? Have you ever trusted in Christ as your savior? There, there's your action item. There's, there, that's what you do. You say, well, I've done that. Are you following him? Good. Way to go. If you're not, start following. Is your life an, an act of worship? Are you worshiping Christ as Lord? There's something for every one of us to do. And I, I, I love this because remember how the angel said that this is for all the people? Nobody's left out. And doesn't for all the people fit real nicely with John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only, one and only son that whoever, that's all the people. That Luke 2.10 goes really well with John 3.16. That whoever, what, believes, what are we supposed to believe? Well, actually, the, the angels did a really good job of helping us see that. <laughs> they said, a savior has been born. So we said, trust Jesus as your Savior. The angel said that this, he would be born in the town of David. Who, who, who's David? The greatest leader in Israel's history. 
and the Messiah would be born in the greatest leader's town because he would, be, he would eclipse the greatest leader. This is a code language for the greatest leader ever, the Messiah, the one who will lead us into our glory years. He will be born in the town of David. It's a hint that he's going to be the great leader. We've been saying, follow Jesus as your leader. And then you've already seen it. Worship him as Lord. He is Christ the Lord. The angels, I think they had it going. They got it. Do you? They got it. Do you? I want to challenge you to not leave here today without doing one or two or three of those things. I opened the sermon by telling you a story about how we went to these homes yesterday, homes to deliver food and, and, and toys. And we went to this one house where there was an 11-year-old boy whose dad was in prison. So we went to, it's the angel tree ministry, we went to give him some toys. And my wife was like, well, we're going to give him toys, let's give him some food too. So my whole family, all, we all tromped in, it was like eight or nine or ten, I don't know how many other, it keeps growing. There was, we all tromped into this little house. It was so cool, and they may have been a little overwhelmed. I know the little boy was. He's... He's only 11 and his eyes were all big. He's like, what are these people doing in my house? Why are all these people here? Hey, whoa, they got food, presents, whoa. You can see his little brain thinking, you know, and he didn't say anything. And so, you know, uh, we, I started to say some things and we're just here to show the love of God. And he's like, you could just see, I don't know what he was thinking because he wouldn't say anything for the longest time, but he got to be thinking, what? What's going on here? And so I said, we're just here to show the love of God isn't John 3, 16, so God, for God so loved? See, God loved, so God gave. God loved, so God gave. So what's the next verb? Whoever believes. So God loves, God gives, where we believe. This little boy doesn't know what to believe. He's like, okay, you say it's love. I see the gifts. Ooh, I like, I like the food. I'm liking this. But what, do I, what, what? what do I do? You know, all these little things going around. Who, again, who are these people? And for the longest time, he didn't say anything. So I said, well, can, can we pray? Before we leave, can we pray for you? And he speaks for the first time and says, can you pray that my daddy gets out of prison? And I'm like, man, I wish I could just do that right now. I, I, I wish that I could set you free from the, the chains in your heart that have formed because you don't have a daddy. You've never seen your daddy. You're in prison, little boy. I didn't say any of this, but I'm thinking this. And I wish I could set you free. I wish I could set your father free. I, w I wish I could just wave the wand. But guess what? I know someone who can set that little boy free. I know someone who can who work in the life of his dad. And, and I'm like, if you only believe. You know, I didn't say that. I just said, you know, God can do that. Let's pray. And so I prayed and I talked about Jesus. And this little boy is just soaking it all in. Can you imagine we come in with all this love, all this food, all these gifts, and his eyes are all big, and he, he, you know, not sure what to do, and so he leaves, and those gifts just stay there. Come on, imagine, I know this is crazy, but imagine he never opens the gifts. They never open the food. I go back a week later, and it's still sitting on the couch where we left it. It's not been touched. Can you imagine that? You'd be like, that's crazy. Why? Because we know that these gifts are valuable. Open them up. Put action to what you believe. You know, there's something in that present. I believe it. Open it up and see. There's something about what God is saying in the birth of Jesus. Open it up and see. There's something about what's happening on the cross. Open it up. Step in. Believe. Act. Trust him as your Savior. Follow him as your Lord. Worship him. Open the gifts. Because God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes, believes what? Who he is, what he said, what he did. Whoever opens the gift, whoever acts on their belief will not perish, but will have everlasting life. Merry Christmas. Let's pray. Lord, we get it. We get it. Or, or do we? Lord, may every one of us today act 
on what we believe. And may we believe in Jesus, who he is, what he said, what he did. Lord, you said that, that we're saved by grace through faith, and this is the gift of God. Not just grace, but faith. So fill us with the faith to believe on the Christmas Sunday morning. Give us the faith to believe, not in magic, not in some story, but in who Jesus is, what Jesus said, what he did. And Lord, may we be one of the whoever's who believes in you. And as we do, bring your life. What we'll talk about on Christmas Eve, Lord. Your life. That none of us have to perish. But all of us can have life. May everyone here today open that gift. We pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We believe. <laughs> We believe you've come, you've died, you've been raised, <laughs> and you're coming back again. In this world of darkness and desperation where everybody is believing something, may we believe in this truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.